As quilters, there's nothing better than having a go-to pattern for a fast finish. But is there something else out there we need to try? I wanted to find the perfect size block for the easiest baby quilt ever. I love charm squares and I thought five inch squares would be great, but there's a lot of seams to those and that's a little too small. Then I thought about layer cakes because they're wonderful, they're beautiful. I love layer cakes, but they require a lot of quilting and that makes them too big. So what's in between? I want to show you which block is just right. This is my easiest baby quilt for 2024, and you are going to love it. I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise, and this quilt is quick to cut, it's simple to sew, and it's easy to quilt. That's exactly what we're looking for. So come on, let me show you how to do this. So how do we define what an easy quilt is? Well, for me, number one, it saves me steps, it saves me time. And the first decision I make is how am I going to buy my fabric? Pre-cuts make quilts easy because you don't have to do the extra cutting. Now, the situation though is what about putting it together? Charm squares are wonderful. If you want to use a lot of different colors, this is a great way to go. But there's a lot of seams because it's a small block. Alternatively, we have layer cakes. Now they're 10 inches, so it's a larger block. There's going to be less uh, sewing with fewer seams, but I don't want all my blocks to be this big because then I'm going to have to do extra quilting inside this block when I finish the, uh, the, the quilt and put the backing on. So what else do we have? We have strips. And I'm going to show you how to make a super easy strip quilt. Two fabrics and a backing. It doesn't get easier than that. The thing that's really important are the two fabrics that you choose. You need contrast and you need interest in your fabric. So what I've done is you may recognize this is a K facet print and it's predominantly blue with some purple, pinky purple, some green, orange. So it has a lot of different colors going on, but predominantly it's a blue piece. And because it has all those colors and all the different patterns and designs, this brings a lot of interest to your quilt. Now, the next thing you want to do is contrast. You want something to engage these two in a way that's going to be very appealing and draw attention. So here I have a dark background. I go opposite with a light white background. It has the colors. We have our blue, we have our purple, we even have our bits of green. So these will work beautifully together. When they're side by side, it's going to really draw attention and draw the viewer's eye to look closer and say, ooh, what am I looking at? What is this I see? I like those colors. So now that we have our fabric selected, let's think about what we're going to put on the back because we want that to be interesting too. I've had this piece of fabric, I have about two yards of it that I have hung on to for a few years. I bought it and thought, oh, this will be so cool. Never quite knew what to do with it. It's an ombre, and I do love it. It goes from the very dark, dark blue to the light blue, and it has medium blues and greens, but I was never quite sure what to do with it. Well, I'm going to use it as a quilt bag. It'll be perfect for this. Again, check out the colors. It really carries through on these, on these colors, which is, you know, exactly what we want. So this is going to be a really well put together quilt. You, someone will look at it and, oh, think there's so much thought behind it, but we're talking about three fabrics. This is going to be a quick, simple, easy, easy quilt. You're going to love it. So let's go ahead and get started. We need to cut some fabric. I've given my fabric a quick press to get the big uh, creases out from being folded, and I'm going to lay them on top of each other. So you need two pieces of fabric, one two-thirds of a yard and one half a yard. And it doesn't matter which way you go, whether you do the light or the dark, it's just a matter of either the fabric you already have, which is my case, or colors that you choose. Now what we're going to do is cut this into six inch strips 
18 inches will divide by six three times. So I'll have three six inch strips. There are times when you buy fabric and you have it cut that it doesn't exactly fulfill the desired <laughs> dimension you asked for. If the previous cut had been a little skewed or crooked, most places that cut to order at the counter will give you that little extra bit. If you're concerned about it, let them know, I really need every bit of 18 inches and they may just give you that little bit extra. And uh, that's up to you. But there is a way to get around it, particularly with this quilt, to make it so it's not a critical issue. Whoops, I didn't push all the way through. When I talk and cut, I'm not always paying attention. There we go. Okay, so my first pair of strips, then I'll do my next pair. Now, on this one, what I want to show you is if you come up short with your fabric and you don't have that full 18 inches, don't worry about it. Cut it whatever it's going to be because the odd man out, we have three, we would put one in the middle and then the other two will be evenly matched so it looks like you have even spacing. But even if it's off a little, you're talking what at most, usually it's not more than a quarter of an inch. If it's more than that, then speak up and say, hey, that's not going to work for me. And they'll be happy to take care of you. Now you notice I didn't cut the selvages off at this point. I'm just cutting them and putting them together. Now this is my final piece. And I just want to make sure that this edge up here is nice and even. So look at that. And I even have a little to spare. So that's perfect. Now, like I said, if I had to, I'm going to cut those threads off. I could, um, you know, cut this just a little bit short and be fine. Now, I'm going to go ahead and sew these at the machine. What makes this such a wonderful, easy quilt is all I'm going to do is put these, look at that, right sides together. All I have to do is grab them. They're good to go. And I'm going to sew a quarter inch down one side on each pair. So let me do that first, and then I'll show you what we do next. This is so amazingly simple and easy. It didn't even take me 15 minutes to sew this. I think it was 15 minutes, including the pressing, to uh, press everything to the darker side fabric. But all we had to do was sew a single seam from edge to edge, not even worry about trimming off that selvage. So there's my first pair, and here's my second pair. And what we're going to do, do you see a pattern coming here? And then I have my third, and what I did is I put the light strip on both sides. So I'm going to have a light and a dark, another light and a dark, a light and a dark that ends with a light. And that's the extent of the quilt. But we have so much going on with the colors, with the patterns. These fabrics are just really attention getting. So it's going to be a beautiful quilt. And the squares aren't too small. They're not too big. These are just right. This is perfect for an easy baby quilt. All I need to do is sew these pieces together and we're ready to quilt this. This is going so fast, I can hardly believe it. We'll be finished before lunch. I have a finished quilt top right here and it didn't even take me 30 minutes. This is so much quicker than I thought it would be. I never imagined it would go this fast. I love it. I will be done by lunch. But just a simple, you know, simple strip sewn together. And they're each six inches. They finish at five and a half. We have seven of them. So this is about 38 inches by the width of fabric, which is going to be 40-ish. What a great size for a baby quilt. And everything is, is pressed to the darker side. And now all I'm going to do is press my backing fabric and I'm going to base this. And of course, I'll use my spray base. That is always the quickest way to do it. This is a great idea for fast, quick, and easy quilts. 
think about what we can do on a large scale and use color blocks, you know, and and go red, white, and blue with stars or something in the middle for either valor, qu- valor quilts or uh, Fourth of July, something like that. Or go for Easter and do wonderful pastels and Christmas. This is such a versatile pattern. And that's the that's the beauty of simplicity. When it's simple, you can change it up so easily. Okay, let's go ahead and let's get this finished. I can't believe it. All right, I'll be right back. I have my quilt basted and all ready to do the final quilting. It looks wonderful. I spray baste it. It goes so easy and it holds together well while I sew. I'll put a link up above on how to use the uh, the spray basting. I, I love it. It's such a quick and easy method, especially on something small like this. You can do it in just a matter of minutes. Now, the other thing is my batting was short. So I joined two pieces, and let me just lift that up here. I, I do sort of like a darning stitch, and I'll put that link up above too, because I always want to use what I have. And when I have two narrow pieces that are long enough for a quilt that I can put together, and then it's now wide enough, absolutely. That's a time saver for me because I don't have to run around looking for the batting or go buy a piece. I'm just using what I already have and that's my credo. I am all about using up what's in in my stash. I have lots of pieces left over from a lot of quilts and I'm going to be using them. So as we go, that's that's what I'm going to be trying to do. And so I'm using methods that will allow me to use what I have and not have to go out and buy more. So I ho- hope that's something you're interested in too. So now we're going to do some very simple quilting. I will start in the center and with my walking foot now, I'm just going to go from side to side. An easy way to quilt this would just to be doing some straight channels and you know doing on each side of the seam perhaps or you can stitch in the ditch whatever your preference is but for the ease of getting this done without um, worrying about being in a exact you know one inch or three inch dimension from the other one we're going to do just some curvy lines very impromptu and we're not going to fuss about things matching and being side by side, we are going to quilt this and it's going to go quickly. So let's go ahead and we'll get set up for that. All right, I am ready to quilt. So I have my walking foot on, a nice new needle, and I I do that because when I'm quilting, I want the needle to go through cleanly and not make large holes or pull threads along the way. And I lengthen my stitch by one point. So usually I will sew it a 2.5. I'll take it up to a 3 for quilting. And that just allows a little more movement for the thread because it gives it a little extra length because of the extra thickness that we're sewing through. And I'm just going to go through this seam. I'm starting sort of in the middle of the quilt. This is the center here, but I'll just start on a seam because that's a good place to go. And I'm just going to kind of meander my way down in a curvy pattern. And the walking foot does a great job with this. And it's going to pull the fabric as you go. So it's going to feed everything along nicely. All you need to do with your hands is I keep it taut so I know there's no wrinkles underneath. And make sure that these fabrics are not folded under to get caught. And just allow myself to guide the fabric the way I want it to go. So I'm using a variegated dark navy blue with bits of uh, purple and light blue. So that ought to be interesting. Like I said, it's the end of a spool. I'm using up what I have. So let's go ahead and get started. And you can go as wide or as narrow as you want as long and as short as you want, and not all of them will be the same. As you're going across the quilt, there'll be variances, and that's the beauty of this. When you need to stop, try and stop in a seam when you can. Sorry, every time I move, I'm gonna be bumping that camera. My quilt is right here in the front. Um, I'll try and 
be as immobile as possible. Okay, so I'm just going to do this all the way across from one side to the other. And you can get moving along pretty good. And I just want to keep my fabric nice and flat. And you'll notice the quilt on this side is rolled up and that allows it to move through the throat of the machine easily and I don't have to worry about it getting caught or pulling or stretching and uh, you know creating havoc. All right so I'll get through this first row and show you what it looks like. Just want to make sure everything's laying as it needs to be. And you can see how nice it is without pins. The spray base holds it great, but I like that I don't have to worry about pulling pins out as I'm sewing either. Let me cut my thread and we'll go back to the beginning and see that looks nice on the back that's going to be perfect and I'm back at the top I'm going to start back at the selvage at the edge of the quilt and you can decide whether you want to follow the same pattern or go you know the opposite way I can tell you if you try and do this exactly the same you're not going to be able to do it we just you know we just don't do that we're not that uh perfect in the way we do this you can use a guide and it'll help you but what's easier is to just make a different curve this way maybe these curves will be shorter uh, maybe they'll be wider so if they look different consistently across the quilt then that becomes your whoops your quilt design and it works beautifully so I'm going to go ahead and where this came this way I'm going to come over this way and I'm going to take it kind of long So I've kind of decided about midway here, what I'm going to do, what works out well, is I'll quilt the seam and then I'll quilt one down the middle. And then I can look at it after and decide if I want to add more quilting. So you can take a look at my second row of quilting and you can see it just meanders along on its own little path and that's absolutely fine. Now I'm going to start on this seam and I'll take it kind of wide over a little bit to fill in because I started that off center. I like the idea of it being um, sort of in the center. So I'll kind of come over here just a little bit. So this is like it'll be in the middle of a curve. And I'm just going to come around like this. And I'm going to come all the way over here. And I'm going to make these on the wider side. And just work your way from one side to the other. the third one done. So I'm going to continue doing the same thing across this side of the quilt and then when I flip it around to the other side I'll show you what it looks like. 
When I finish this side of the quilting, I just turn my quilt sandwich around and now I'm going to come over to the other edge. I'm going to do exactly the same thing following my uh, sort of a curvy wavy path and then once that's finished we'll get it uh, trimmed down and ready to bind. So let me go ahead and finish this and I'll show you what it looks like at the end. While there's not a lot to this quilt, those colors are stunning. I love the contrast. And this is what you would consider a color block quilt, where you use really vibrant blocks of color next to each other in order to get contrast for a quilt design. And a lot of times you'll see these blocks in um, colors like, you know, say a red and orange and yellow or something like that. And it's it's just fun fun to do, but I like the repeating pattern of the fabric. I think because this fabric, the K-Facet fabric, is so um, full of interesting um, designs that you can easily repeat it throughout the quilt and it looks fabulous. I am really, really happy with this. And my goodness, it certainly is a quick quilt. So I hope you enjoy this. I hope you get to uh, make your own. There is a uh, link down below in the description if you'd like to get a copy. And that's it for today. This has been such a pleasure for me to share with you. Thank you for following along and have yourself a wonderful rest of your day.